Hello everyone, 2-4 here, and today is April Fool's Day, so I kinda wanna start a tradition where I do something for April Fool's Day, but since the fact that a lot of my videos are kind of reliant on humor in some way, to me it didn't make sense to make a video about humor on a humorous day because it doesn't really stand out, but then I got the idea of doing somewhat serious videos on this day. I considered doing something that had nothing to do with Stargate just to mess with people, but I had a feeling the general reaction to that specific topic would have been... Uh-uh. No. No. I also considered talking about Gate, but no, not yet. But one day I'm coming for you, Gate. I'm coming for you! So instead, I decided to do something else crazy. Talk about good things in Stargate Infinity. I don't understand it. Why didn't the Tlacon put up more of a fight? You better answer this. That better. That's not a rhetorical question. That's not a rhetorical question. You have to answer that question when you go into that kind of territory. Ah, oh, man. Infinity is definitely the black sheep of the Stargate family for some justified reasons. So, this is an ancient. Serious? Yes, I know I used that joke before in the Everything Wrong With video, I like that joke, sue me. Anyway, despite all of Infinity's problems, which I must reiterate, there are many, I think every now and again the show brings up some good elements or some good ideas that I think would be good additions to the Stargate universe. Side note, Infinity has a weird canon to it that I might one day go into detail about, but did you know it takes place 30 years after the first movie, which would place it around the year 2024. Weird, ain't it? So here are the top five good things from Stargate Infinity that I think can be brought in to the proper Stargate universe. Stargate Infinity. Number five, use of vehicles. Stargate has always relied on gate travel as its main mode of transportation, which I mean, it's in the name Stargate. But the franchise has gone on to introduce other modes of transportation, Earth's various battleships, puddle jumpers, and so on. But these vehicles have always been spaced or air-based vehicles. The only vehicle from the shows I can recall that was used for land-based operations was this MALP-mounted machine gun and... It looks silly, right? Like, I'm sorry, but that looks... kind of silly. Besides... This, the SGC has never really invested much into land-based vehicles, which even the Templin Institute pointed out, and while they gave a good reason about why the SGC doesn't use land-based vehicles, I think Infinity introduced some decent vehicles which I think would be good additions to the franchise, and I would like to see this brought into Stargate proper. Even the jetpack, which I admit looks kind of silly, would be useful. I get this idea when I was watching some of the episodes of SG-1 and I started thinking, man, this problem would be over a lot quicker if they had, like, a car or something. Even the toy line from the OG movie had a land-based vehicle. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much for this one. I just think it would make sense that for Stargate Command to start introducing vehicles at some point. At the very least, you know, in case they have to drive like a lot of material between one place to another and the gate is kind of far away. And I think Infinity's vehicles are okay. They're okay and I think they would make sense. Although I will admit they kind of look like something out of Halo. Although I can't tell if that means my case is better or worse. Number four, Gus Bonner. Heh, <laughs> Bonner. So Gus Bonner, wait, let me use his official title, Major Gus Bonner. Okay, I'm done now. Gus is pretty much the only likable character in the main cast for Infinity. This is probably because he's the only one who is written as an adult. We don't know the ages of the main cast in Infinity, but besides Gus, the rest of the cast is probably younger since they are all cadets. In the brief research I did, I found that age for a cadet is around the age 18 to 21. Again, hopefully my research was right on that. But even still, they kind of feel a bit like this. Yo, dog, what you do that for? Dude, that hot chick was so totally a go. Duh, I was still gonna tap that. 
Since Gus is written as an adult and is meant to be the mentor character, he doesn't really have the moments that annoy me like pretty much everyone else in the cast has. Stargate regulations forbid any member of an SG team from collecting souvenirs. Um, of course, we're not on an official mission, so technically the regs may not apply to us. Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead! And at times, he honestly gives out some good advice. Why people want money? Well, money has no value in itself. It's usually just paper or numbers in a computer. But because everybody agrees those numbers are worth something, you can trade it for things with real value. Like food, clothes, shelter, transportation. Things everybody needs. And things that are just fun, like a television or a computer, a vacation. Or a pretty rock to wear on your finger. But you can also use money for things like supporting good causes. Or to help people make their lives better. There's nothing wrong with money, Dragon. But the trouble is sometimes people get greedy. Now, he's not perfect, like that time he let his friend who enslaved an entire planet get off scot-free, or when he stole a ship that turned out to be a trap by the Tlacon. Though, I'd argue with the latter, that could have been more a moment of character development, since he was so desperate to get his team home and warn the SGC. Kind of like those moments when McCain needed to learn a bit of humility. As for how I would like to see Gus brought into the main universe, to be honest, I'm not really sure. It would be weird to just drop him in outside of a series that he was not made for. I mean, his role is as the mentor person. It'd be weird to just drop him in when he's not really needing to mentor people. Maybe something like a cameo, name drop, or even give him like his own solo episode. There's also the possibility of making a new series with him in the cast, but let's save that idea for later. Number 3, Non-Human Aliens Having aliens in science fiction is not a requirement, but is still kind of a big thing for most franchises. But a big issue for a long time, especially when you have live actors on a TV set, is making aliens can be really expensive. Even with the modern technology we have today, it's still expensive to make a convincing alien stand alongside a human being. This is why most aliens in Star Trek look human. Look past the lore explanation. The real reason is just infinitely cheaper to have someone with a broken nose and say, oh, they're an alien. There's also some writing reasons. As if the aliens look too alien, it's hard for the audience to connect with them. Stargate circumvented this issue by having, in my opinion, one of the greatest in-universe reasons for why most of the aliens and races encountered by the SGC look human, because most of them are, as they are descendants of humans who were enslaved by the Gu'uld and taken away to other worlds. That being said, I also think it's something the franchise has kind of begun to rely on a bit too much. The Milky Way galaxy is full of humans who were taken away from Earth and enslaved by the Gu'uld. Okay, and the Pegasus Galaxy is full of humans who were created by the Ancients. Okay. There's also the Ori Galaxy where the first human beings came to be and is now full of humans created by the Ori. Okay, okay. Finally, there's this galaxy that's millions of light years away from the other galaxies that has a human population or the descendants of the crew of the Destiny from a time travel accident. Okay, now you've lost me. Disclaimer, I don't really have a problem with this, and I don't really know if a population around 80 can start a civilization, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make here is Stargate, I felt like, really started to rely on the aliens are just humans thing. And I think certain factions have suffered from this, like the Gu'uld, Tok'ra, and Karens, and even the Jaffa to an extent, who, let's be honest, are just humans. Yes, you can say they have symbiotes, yellow eyes, or pouches. But when you think of Ball, do you think of the snake in the head or of the person? Getting back to Infinity, they always interacted with aliens. Now, they had some good designs, some not so good, but it was still them meeting actual aliens who looked, well, alien. And we know Stargate can do aliens like the Owns, Ritu, Unus, and Wraith. Now yes, there would be the issue of cost, but given that Stargate Infinity is a cartoon, maybe they could have another animated Stargate show and have the more alien designs pop up there and just have them kind of interact with the live action stuff every now and again. We've seen from modern Disney that you can have characters and elements cross over between animated and live action properties. 
Disney. The mere thought of that makes me sick. Number two, the Takan. The Taklan were the main antagonists in Stargate Infinity, and while they do have their problems, like how really, really, really cartoonish and stupid they could be written sometimes. We've ambushed the humans before, and somehow they always escape. Perhaps we should try something else. Something different. No! That is the human way! If they fail, they think they should try a new way of doing something. That is weakness! Until I can a strong! When we fail, we try again! And again! And again! We will not be changed! And that is why the Talakan will always win in the end! I feel the need, however, to point something out. The Gould could get a little cartoony in their actions too, couldn't they? And I feel if we peel back the layers of the bad on Stargate Infinity, we can see some of the interesting things about the Thaklan that make them dangerous. See, almost every major bad guy faction in Stargate, the Goo Old, Wraith, Ori, Replicators, are usually written in a way where they can't really coexist or work with anyone else. This is usually because they try to exterminate, dominate, or eat them, or just do something to them that means their civilization doesn't really remain at the end. But the Taklan are interesting because they don't really operate that way. Sure, they're engaged in empire building and would most likely enslave and wipe out other civilizations, but we do see them work with at least two races, the Shapeshifters, whose name I can't remember, and the Mardan. Granted, it's not exactly a good or healthy relationship, but it still makes them slightly different than the other villains. This actually gave me an idea I was workshopping for a Stargate Infinity rewrite video, let me know if any of you are interested in that, where the Takan would go on to form this anti-human alliance with the various non-human aliens in the galaxy. In theory, it's supposed to be a coalition to protect the non-humans from the major human factions like the Lucian Alliance or Earth. But in reality, it's kind of more like the Covenant, with the Declan sitting at the top. Just one last thing I noticed is that unlike the other villain races, which are more or less always written as an entirely evil race, there are exceptions to this, but they're usually few and far between. There was this episode where the team came across a group of Declan who left their world to be free of their oppressive government. They don't regard themselves as a new race like the Tok'ra, they still consider themselves Tlacan. They just don't like the Nox Council, the ruling government of their empire. And again, this is something that is built different for Stargate. And given recent effects of certain governments doing bad things and then arresting their citizens for protesting, I think this would kind of fit well with current political things going on in the world. Again, the Tlacan are not perfect, but there is something there. Number one, the overall story. Finally, the story of Stargate Infinity isn't a bad one. A soldier is framed for treason and is forced to leave the SGC with a team of young cadets and a valuable item that is connected to the ancients. On the run from a hostile alien force, while trying to find a way home to warn Earth about a spy among their ranks. That's not a bad story to have set in the Stargate universe. It gives them a chance to explore new worlds on Stargate or revisit old ones. And the show, their reasoning for meeting all these new alien races is that they're going to worlds that specifically Stargate Command hasn't gone to yet, as they're trying to hide out. Another element that I think would make this story unique is they wouldn't have what I'm going to refer to as a home base. The SGC, Atlantis, Destiny, almost each show with the exception of two, have something like this. A safe harbor they can go to. And I think it would be a good idea to bring this in Stargate proper. Again, it's just something we haven't really seen in Stargate before. So tying this back to what I said earlier, there's also the possibility of making a new series with him in the cast, but Let's save that idea for later. Yeah, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to remake Stargate Infinity or reboot it in some way, but have it set in the main Stargate timeline. Remember, the main problems with Infinity was A, the characters were written in a bad way that made them annoying and preachy. But we've seen Stargate write for young characters and 
do it pretty well. B. The show acted like a Saturday morning cartoon and tried to tell these lessons in a My Little Pony-like way, but more out of like the Gen 3 era. Don't ask me how I know that. And C. All the odd little things that made it non-canon with the rest of the show. <laughs> But the people who made Stargate Infinity were never really in talks with the main writers from Stargate SG-1. And if they were to reboot the show with the idea of it's going to be set in the main universe, they could just fix all these little errors. So those are my top 5 good things from Stargate Infinity. I hope you all enjoy it and tell me what new elements you would like to see brought into the Stargate universe. And do you agree with some of the things I said? Or do you think we should never talk about Stargate Infinity again like we don't talk about Bruno? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below and maybe leave a like and subscribe. And remember... Build my ancient so long ago, the Stargate